Hey, Brian from Snake Bites here. It's that time of the year again when we're bringing colubrids out of hibernation. That means a whole lot more snakes for us to take care of. We're gonna spend some time talking about why we hibernate snakes and how we bring them out of hibernation. You're watching Snake Bites. All right, so you guys are actually experiencing exactly what I'm experiencing. The lights are actually on in the Kluber room after three months of being dark in here. We've got the temperatures going from 50 degrees all the way up to about the mid 60s. Over the next week, week and a half, we'll bring them all the way up into the mid 70s, and then we'll go ahead and start to feed the animals. But first things first, why do we hibernate? We hibernate because it's really important to give these guys a dormant period. Most people think that males need a cool down period to go through spermatogenesis, which means that they need fertile sperm. They also believe that females need the same dormant period in order to start producing follicles. People have had success with not hibernating snakes and still getting fertile offspring, but most people have the best success when they do hibernate animals. And you know what? If you guys have one corn snake or a king snake as a pet, there's no need to hibernate it at all. The thing that's really cool now is to go through and see all these animals. Just figure, I just added 5,000 snakes to my collection overnight, so there's a lot of work that we have to go through. But what's really exciting is to see all these animals I've missed for the last few months and start thinking about what I'm going to breed what to. I'm going to show you some of the animals I'm excited about and maybe even start to think about what I'm going to put them with. There's something about a white snake. As a matter of fact, you guys remember, we dedicated a whole show to white snakes. And these blizzard corns are kind of the perfect animal. They're just solid white with pink eyes, which is really cool. They're actually three mutations. They're azanthic, anuthristic, and amelanistic. So it took quite a while to produce these guys, even though they're relatively common now. These guys are so sweet. These are actually lavender blood red corn snakes. These are one of my favorite corn snakes by far. And I know I'm going to say that a lot, but this is really, I truly mean it on this one. It's just amazing. These guys are so lavender and with pink highlights, a little bit of black freckling in them. But I tell you what, in Motley, my absolute favorite are these gold dust Motley corns. These guys are an ultra amel and a hypomelanistic all at the same time. And again, they've got the same pattern down them with the dots and so on like that. And what's really cool about this is you can actually take an, a gold dust Motley and breed it to an amel Motley and produce gold dust Motleys in the first generation, which is really an awesome mutation. These guys are no block eye or Terra Humera mountain kings. We actually showed you guys a stripe variety a few shows back. This is actually their normal color phases. They're going to have about three to six eggs, so you're not going to mass produce these guys. We've showed these guys in albino form, but these are actually the het for albino or normal phase. These are the king rat snakes, and look at how big these guys get. I mean, they're just monsters for a colubrid, and they're just so colorful. You have to really be careful, because in hibernation, these guys get pretty aggressive, so you don't want to get too close. And what's really interesting, if we had smell vision you guys would smell it. It pretty much stinks in here, because all these snakes, when they're hibernating, love to musk when you handle them. You guys probably remember these from Chewy's room, actually. These are the rhino rats, and they finally got hibernated, so we're looking forward to producing our first baby rhino rats this year. This is a project that I was so excited about from when they were a baby all the way raising up. Showed them in the show a bunch of times because I was just so excited about it. Now I get a chance to actually breed them this year. I can't wait to get babies from these guys. I gotta show you guys this anaconda hog. This one was in Chewy's room as well, and we have several animals, but this is by far my most beautiful one. And uh, these guys were actually produced by Brent Baumgartner over at Superconda. It's just a really cool project, and we're looking forward to producing a bunch of different mutations over the next couple years in this. These animals are really interesting, and you don't see them very often. These are actually albino kunisher rat snakes. Again, they're like a Japanese rat snake, from a, but from a particular island, which is obviously kunisher, and these are the albino form. You know what? The actual normal form is really cool looking, too. They actually have kind of a green, almost a turquoise blue color to them as they get bigger. So they're both really interesting animals, and uh, we've been producing these guys for a few years, and they actually are really popular. As a matter of fact, one of the places we sell the most of them, too, believe it or not, is Japan, where they're from. You wouldn't think you'd be exporting them back to the place that they actually originated from. I have to show off these iridescent cow kings because we showed the little baby a handful of weeks ago and a lot of people really like the looks of it. Well, this is actually an adult male that's ready to breed this year. So we hope to produce some more of these iridescent cows and maybe be able to sell a couple of them this year. A bunch of my friends in the snake business used to always make fun of me about my greenish rat collection. This is actually an albino greenish rat snake, and I know they aren't the most glamorous animal to keep, but I'm telling you what, there's something special. I love greenish rats, and I really like the albino greenish rats. 
I work with a lot of different Brooks King snakes, stuff like hypo white sides and white sides and andries and all kinds of different things. This is the first year I'm going to be breeding this mutation. It's actually called a Jelly Brooks. What's really cool about this is when you breed it into other mutations, it makes some really cool offspring. Like for instance, these guys directly into albino make some ridiculous offspring, the very first generation. So I'm pretty excited about seeing what we can come up with with breeding into all our different mutations of Brooks Kings. There's a lot of varieties of cow kings, and one of the ones that's really dear to my heart are these high white cow kings. These guys are getting to the point now where there's hardly any black on them whatsoever except for their head. Literally, we're getting these solid white snakes with little black freckles and then this black head. So it's pretty cool, and as you breed them, they get better and better every generation. So we have our best animals up to size this year, so let's hope we produce some really sick babies. Another cow king that I'm really excited about that you just don't see much of are these ghosts. Cow kings, but this is actually a chocolate version of it. So ghost kings are actually relatively rare to begin with, but this is actually the chocolate version. I think we have the only chocolate ghost cow kings around, so it's going to be really cool to get these into other mutations and maybe even get some three or four bang cow kings in the not too distant future. I could show you guys things for hours in this clear room, and as a matter of fact, I'm even discovering stuff that I either forgot or didn't realize I had. Just goes to show you we have a lot to look forward to this season. Snake myth. Fact or fiction. All right, Bryce, so it's been a while since we've done a snake net, but I got one for you. It might be a stretch, but somebody sent me an email saying the longer the mustache you have, the less likely you are to get bit by a snake. What do you think about that? Well, it has been a while since we've done one of these myths, and uh, I do think it is a stretch. I'm not sure we're going to prove anything with this myth, but it is an awesome opportunity to see Chewy get bit. Definitely. Let's quit wasting time. Let's get to it. So, the mustache trick. Mustache on. Hi, Snake. Oh! Hi, Snake. I got a big old bus. Whoa! Hi, Snake. I got a big old. Whoa! <laughs> oh! Now we'll try a different snake. Hi, Snake. Oh! Hi, Snake. Look at me. I got a big old mustache. You don't like big mustache. Hello, Snake. Ooh. Look at me. I got a big mustache. You don't bite a big mustache. <laughs> oh. <laughs> ah. Look at me! Whoa! Whoa! Alright Bryce, how'd it go? Well ironically enough, the snakes were plenty willing to strike, but they actually never bit them. So maybe the mustache was too long. I'm not sure really what to think. Or maybe it was Chewy's lucky day. That's possible. What are you gonna call this? Factor this was definitely gotta be a faction. Faction. For this week's comment of the week on the Snakes Like Sex episode, the question was, what do you think about Valentine's Day? And Mama's Monster said, Valentine's Day is just another government holiday. It's got nothing to do with love. And even if it did, why would you need to celebrate that on just one day? If you love someone, every day is special. Seriously, if you waste your time and money on a chick or even a dude on V-Day, think about how unoriginal you are. I have to agree with you, there's no doubt if you care for someone, it's not about one day a year, you should show them that you care every single day. Until next time, you guys keep sending me creative comments, I'm going to feature you on a future episode. Alright guys, it's Cal's Question of the Week. This show is all about hibernation. I want to know from you guys, what's the longest amount of time you've gone without sleep, and let me know why. Text the video comment below. So there it is. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. I got to tell you, I'm really excited to get these animals out of hibernation, even though it's going to mean a whole lot more work. Next week, you guys got to tune in because we're heading on the road. We're going to go to a school with about three or 400 wild kids that are going to be super excited to see our reptiles. Until next time, you've been watching Snake Bites.